Okay, so here we are starting the experiment or well, procedure by measuring out some potassium nitrate. We're going to, first of all, tear or zero the balance with a piece of paper on it. Here's our potassium nitrate, and we're going to scoop out approximately 10 grams of potassium nitrate, and you should record the actual final mass of potassium nitrate that we measure out. Uh, this is a fair amount of KNO3, takes a number of scoops. Okay, maybe one more scoop. Okay, so that is going to be our final amount. We'll close the door and get a get your mass reading and record the mass of KNO3. All right, now we're going to, uh, you can't see it too well here in the, in the video, but there's the potassium nitrate being transferred into a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. This is going to be our uh, solution vessel that we'll put in the hot water bath. I'm going to transfer all the potassium nitrate, being careful not to lose any in the process. And note, of course, this same amount of potassium nitrate will be used throughout. We're not going to add any more. We are going to add about 8 milliliters or so of distilled water and make a solution now. And once it's all dissolved, you're going to need to determine the volume of solution. So here's our hot water bath. We put in our KNO3 with water. We're going to heat it up. Uh, with stirring, we're going to use this temperature probe as both our temperature measuring system and our stirring rod. So we're going to stir and heat until all the KNO3 is fully dissolved. So there's a little bit of patience involved here. Okay, so we cut out just a little bit of the process there. There's still some KNO3 left in the, in the bottom. We're going to get all of that KNO3 dissolved. You can maybe see the temperature on the computer screen, and uh, we'll have a better view of it soon. And what, you're going, what we're going to do is we're going to determine the temperature at which, after we've made all the potassium nitrate dissolve, we're going to remove the the graduated cylinder from the hot water bath. We're going to stir continuously while letting it cool and you're going to determine and record the temperature at which the first crystallization starts occurring. So that's going to correspond to the maximum solubility at that temperature. Okay, so we're going to remove the temperature probe, dry off the graduated cylinder, and try to, well, succeed in estimating the volume to the tenth of a milliliter and you can pause the video or rewind it if you need to but you're going to need the total solution volume at this point and then we're going to slowly let it cool while stirring and wait for crystal formation to start and same thing as before you have to be a little bit patient maybe a lot patient it takes a while and we want the moment at which crystals just barely start to form. And if you're uncertain, you can always pause the video, rewind it a bit. Uh, that's the benefit of not doing this in uh, person, uh, is if you, or if you video it, you can um, go back and make the observation if you partially missed it. So we'll just let it go for a while, and I'll leave it up to you to determine the temperature at which crystallization starts to occur.
And then once we are very certain that crystallization has occurred, we'll remove the temperature probe from the hot water bath or from the uh, graduated cylinder and get ready for our second round. We're going to add about three milliliters of distilled water. And again, the amount added isn't as critical as what the new solution volume is going to be. Once again, we're going to heat this up to get all the potassium nitrate to fully dissolve. Since we have the same amount of potassium nitrate as before, we didn't add any of that, but we've added some water, so we've increased the solution volume and therefore decreased the concentration of KNO3 in this aqueous solution. It, we would expect it would take a uh, lower temperature to get everything to, to dissolve than the previous um, round of this experiment. And there we go. Looks like we've got all the KNO3 fully dissolved. And we're going to repeat this process of drying off the test tube, sorry, the graduated cylinder, removing the temperature probe, estimating as well as you can the total solution volume to the tenth of a milliliter. So hold it steady enough or you can read. Okay, so now that you've determined the total solution volume for the second round, uh, we're going to once again stir gently while letting it gradually cool. You're looking for the temperature at which crystallization just barely starts to occur. And we'll go a little bit past that to make sure that we have not missed that point. So up to you to determine the temperature at which we just barely have crystallization. And it's a little bit slow, but it's faster here with the video that's somewhat compressed compared to doing it yourself. All right, and I think we can pretty confidently say we now definitely are past the point and we had crystal formation, so we're going to repeat again. Remove the temperature probe, add about 10 milliliters, sorry, add about 3 milliliters of distilled water. So same amount of KNO3, a little bit more water, a little bit lower solution concentration, lower temperature needed to get everything to dissolve. So heat it up, stir, dissolve. Once it's all dissolved, remove from the temperature bath, determine the solution volume, estimating from the graduated cylinder, and then let it slowly cool with stirring and estimate the temperature at which crystals just barely start to form. 
Alrighty, so removing temperature probe. New solution volume, please estimate to the tenth of a milliliter. And then monitor the cooling. Pay attention to the temperature. Look for first sign of crystal formation. All right, and again, pretty safe to say that we now have a fair amount of crystallization going on, definitely past the point, and do it again. Three more milliliters of water, distilled water added. New solution volume, slightly diluted from the previous. Heat to fully dissolve. All right, fully dissolved. Remove temperature probe, dry off graduated cylinder. Try to get, all right, there we go. Estimate the volume to the tenth of a milliliter. Sorry, that one didn't get held there for too long, but you should be able to go back if you need to. Once again, slowly cooling with continual gentle stirring. Look for a first sign of crystal formation. And the closer we get to room temperature, the slower uh, the cooling ends up being, or the less quickly the temperature drops. So a uh, couple little pieces have been edited out here just to compress this a bit. And again, be patient, pay attention, look for first signs of crystal formation, and we'll go long enough to be sure we're well past that temperature. Alrighty, so that one we got past the temperature at which crystals formed, add three more milliliters or so of distilled water. Heat up, dissolve in the water bath. All dissolved, remove from water bath. And okay, we're getting pretty close to the maximum volume here that we can record, so estimate the total solution volume now to the tenth of a milliliter. Sorry, it's a little bit bouncy there. Do the best you can. Alrighty, and this is the last one because we're going to now, after this, uh, exceed the uh, measuring capacity of the 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, so patience for your very last determination of temperature at which crystals start forming for this last concentration of potassium nitrate solution. And 
little bit's been edited out to make this less painfully slow. And we'll again go past the point at which crystals start to form to be sure that we've gone far enough. All right, and we're going to say that we've definitely had crystal formation.